Chapter 3 Forensic study of Sector H's data showed a suicide by overdose in Dorm B, followed by resuscitation. Gen 8 Model 2 was the victim, but the data banks showed no signs of the clone in this sector. Search the entire university for Bex. The forensic specialist urged the system. No results were yielded. The hell is this? How does somebody disappear like that? Keep an eye out for the victim's implant signature, he said. Until then, Sector H is under quarantine. Two. Are you saying that everyone in Sector H is gone? Dead? Bex yelled at Zalpha, half expecting his assumption was true. Technically no, and technically yes. Zalpha calmly answered. Acetra touched Bex's shoulder. He looked into her eyes. Zalpha continued. Technically, Sector H is now data, so they're, they're not gone. While all life forms in Sector H are no longer considered alive, this makes them dead technically, but no more dead than a 21st century lithium-ion battery. They are in a state of pause, so to speak, until they are released from quarantine. How do you know all this? Bex was so angry at Zalpha that he almost hit him. I am one of the last Gen 1 clones. There are 23 who came before me and two who were created after. I, like Acetra, have been around long enough to know the drill. Generations of clones are put into quarantine before the next generation is issued to the university, which is run by meta-organisms. The eugenics department has officially created nine generations of clones. The most recent, the IOTA generation, which your Gen 8 counterparts, which means your Gen 8 counterparts are in quarantine. Sam may have been in Sector H when the compression finished. The three of us fit so well together that we narrowly escaped the compression using abilities that we can't access on our own. When you bit the apple, the neurotoxin entered your system, killing you. If I hadn't stabbed you in the chest with a syringe full of adrenaline, you'd still be dead. Etcetera and I would be data, like the rest of Sector H, and the portal into the fourth dimension never would have opened. Because you developed a small immunity, to the neurotoxin, you were able to stay conscious while Acetra and myself couldn't. Acetra's singing and your music brought me out of the mind trap, which is why I headhunted you, Bex. Mind trap? Acetra and Bex asked in unison. Yes. The two of you have the ability to pull me out. Musical language is universal. Tempo regulates rhythm and allows me to access my subconscious mind, grounding me from the fear. I'm able <coughs> to turn random stimuli into a free associative answer, but if I stay too long, I can't pull myself out, and I need someone to care for me while my body is on autopilot. I can enter the mind trap on my own, but the risk of permanency grows every time I do. Sam and 27W were my regulators. Sam is excellent at producing random stimuli and 27W kept watch over me if my zombie functions led me astray, allowing me to hone my savant abilities. Zalpha continued, but computers and animals can't always fill the spot of biological sentient beings such as yourselves. Now, this information is for Schizoid Cult. <coughs> Schizoid Cult Corporation solely, strictly classified. By repeating what I've said to anyone, 
you could put the corporation at risk, but more importantly, the lives of the individuals comprising of schizoid cult. Bex and Acetra were sworn to secrecy. Bex, having pulled his partners out of the fourth dimension, had repaid Zalpha for saving his life, and in doing so, Acetra became indebted to him. We're going after Hubris in 89X, Bex said. I need answers. I need to know why they tried to kill me. 3. Schizoid Cult <coughs> Schizoid Cult, the Trinity, was intercepted by the forensics department as they left the dorm. Bex, right? Huh? You're coming with us. Big men in uniform took Bex's arm and wrenched it around his back, restraining him. What's this all about? He asked as they put shackles around his wrists. They said nothing and restrained Acetra and Zalpha as well. The three were blindfolded, taken to a secret location, brought into separate rooms and interrogated. 4. Bex was questioned about the apparent suicide in his dorm, then he was asked why he was still alive. He told the inspector that he hadn't intended to kill himself, rather, he, he was poisoned. They took down his statement, then issued a psychiatrist to speak with him. You have everything to live for, the shrink told him. Bex was placed on suicide watch. Five. Acetra was asked whether she thought Bex was a threat to himself or others, to which she adamantly insisted he wasn't. Six. Zalpha told the authorities he was in the area looking for an autographed copy of Cerebri Animam's latest album. When he had knocked on the door, the monitor showed Bex convulsing on the floor foaming at the mouth. He said he had spoken to Bex earlier that day and some quick thinking allowed him to pull the thumbprint from the back of his hand to get in. I'm allergic to shellfish, so I carry adrenaline. Lucky for him, eh? They took a statement from him and let him go. 7. Hubris 89X entered the eugenics department. Welcome back, said the receptionist. They followed a corridor towards the organ processing area where studies were conducted about clone anatomy. Clones were birthed as mature adults. Gen 9 was no exception. They were created with unique minds optimized to specifications for career function. The hot demand from military personnel offered each Gen 9 clone a primary directive towards war. And each of the 26 clones were fitted with unique cerebral function. This generation had larger amygdalae and thicker muscle structures. Hubris 89X plugged into the database for the hacked generation and sifted through countless stats. But Bex's weren't here. They unplugged from the server and went to sterilization. <coughs> then to the morgue to check the records to see if the late clone was identified. Eight. Sam had no need for food in his current state. But he didn't know this. He followed the circuits in Sector H until he smelt apple in the code. He followed the scent until eventually he came across a switch that to him seemed like a bridge. He crossed the switch and immediately felt the fear. He, he turned to run back, but the switch was already closed. No way back. Sam proceeded. He, he proceeded to follow the scent of apples 